Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module five, lesson seven. And in this lesson, students are, we're gonna be returning to those pattern blocks for a little bit because what we're doing is we're moving from focusing on the shapes themselves to now we're talking about uh, using those shapes to talk about fractions. So we're gonna be using the area model to talk about fractions and we're gonna be partitioning uh, so we're <clears throat> in first grade, we're not going to be doing fractions in terms of a number line, uh, which is a later grade. At this point, we're going to be talking about fractions in terms of parts of a whole. So we're going to be cutting things into equal sized parts, and that's going to be the big thing is equal sized parts. So let's get started. So we're going to be using pattern blocks. Now, parents and teachers, if you don't have pattern blocks, you don't have to freak out because you could... You could use other manipulatives. You could use pictures. Um, I'm going to use pattern blocks to get my point across. Oops. Uh, but uh, you don't have to use pattern blocks. All right. So now let's imagine we're going to take this trapezoid here. Now, how can we make that trapezoid using shapes? Well, we could take a rhombus and a triangle, and that makes our trapezoid, right? So that's one way we could do it. But the thing that we want our students to be focusing on today in this lesson is we are going to be focusing on using equal sized parts. Now, because I used two shapes to make that trapezoid, that's cool, but did I use equal sized shapes? And of course, the answer is no. So we can take another trapezoid here, and then I can take a bunch of triangles. One, two, and three, so now I'm putting them together, and oh, look at that. So again, I've made a trapezoid using parts, using different pattern blocks, but this time I've done it using three equal sized shapes. In contrast with over here, I used two, but they were not equal sized shapes. Now we could do the same thing with a hexagon, and that's the cool thing. The cool thing about the hexagon is our students have a bunch of choices. So they could use, let's see, two trapezoids. Wa-bam. Or we can use three rhombuses. Do we say rhombuses or rhombi? I don't know. It's like octopuses. Okay, so anyway, and then we've got that. Or we could use another hexagon. And oh my goodness, we could use six triangles, all right? And so now as we're doing this, parents and teachers, we want our students to be, first off, we want them to be playing with these figures. We really want math to be fun. Um, and then we also want students to be practicing their vocabulary using words like trapezoids or rhombus or triangles or hexagons. You get the idea. So we're going to be focusing today on partitioning figures, in this case maybe a hexagon, into equal sized parts. And in this case we could have done two trapezoids, three rhombuses, or six triangles. So once our students have had plenty of fun and experience of taking um, a shape and cutting it into equal sized parts, uh, the key is equal sized parts. Uh, now they're going to just kind of practice with answering yes or no as to whether a figure has been cut into equal parts. So yes, if it's equal parts, and and if, of course, if it's not, not equal parts. Now if it is equal parts, we need to say how many equal parts are there. So we could see that this has been cut into two equal parts, and so it's a yes, and then it's a two. Here, this M, well, we could see that the two parts are equal. So we could say yes, and there's two equal parts. For this letter Y, mm -mm. we have two parts, but are they equal? No, the answer is not, not equal. So I'm going to put a no. And we don't have to bother filling in the, that number because they're not equal parts. How about this guy? Are they equal? No, they're not equal. So we don't even need to fill in that part. Now, parents and teachers, you get that, the idea. We're focusing on equal parts. 
Uh, I'm going to talk about equal parts on the next slide. So here we are on that next slide. And the directions, we're removing our scaffolds a little bit because now the students have to draw in the line in order to create the equal parts. It says draw one line to make two equal parts. So we have to look at this triangle and figure out, well, how can we draw one line to make two equal parts? I think the most common answer is going to be this. And of course, I made two triangles. But parents and teachers, heads up, some of your kiddos may actually do this. <laughs> and in which case, they would have made two triangles, one right here, one right here. And they are both equal, at least they appear to be to me. And it, the answer would still be two triangles. But parents and teachers, we want to pay attention for the kids, the out-of-the-box thinkers, who might draw an answer and get an answer that's correct but is different from what we were thinking about. So we don't want to make our students feel like they're wrong. In fact, we want to celebrate the fact that they figured out a unique way to be correct. Now here is the one that I really want to talk about, question three. It says, draw two lines to make four equal parts. Okay, now I suspect what the authors of this book were thinking about was one, two, there's our two lines, and there are our four equal parts. Okay, so the answer would be I made four rectangles. But here's the thing, I want to give you all a heads up. What if you have a student who does this? <laughs> are those, so we've drawn two lines, are those four equal parts? Here's the surprise. The answer is yes, those are four equal parts. I know that these triangles don't look the same. Like, we see that this triangle, and let's see if I can do a color. Okay, this red one and this wet red one it does not take a lot of imagination to see that those triangles are equal. But the question is, what about these blue ones? Right? And now we can see that the blue ones are equal to each other, but are the blue ones the same as the red ones? Well, the answer is that, well, they're not the same, but are they equal parts? And for many adults, uh, this the answer is a surprising, yep, they are equal. So these are equal for equal parts. It's not the answer uh, Eureka Math was really looking for. So if a student does this, you need to celebrate it, you need to honor it, you need to acknowledge that the parts don't look the same, but they are indeed equal parts. All right? And then the last one, pretty straightforward. Draw lines, and it doesn't tell you how many, to make six equal parts. Now, parents and teachers, if your students struggle with this, don't freak out. Just let them play. The, the, answer, we're look at, the, um, the answer we're hoping to avoid is having our students do something like this where they're making one, two, three, four, five, six parts, but they're absolutely not equal. So that's the answer we're hoping to avoid. So just keep an eye out on that. And that wraps up a fun one. That's first grade, module five, lesson seven. We're getting into fractions. So we are taking shapes. We're cutting them up into equal parts, same sized parts. They're not, parts aren't necessarily looking the same as each other but they are equal-sized parts.